What's up sports fans? This is the Lucas Ross Sports Channel and it's time to give you my updated college football top 25 rankings heading into conference championship weekend also known as week number 14 of the 2023 college football season. The college football season of 2023, the regular season, is now officially complete. Again, we're heading into conference championship this weekend. And we also got selection Sunday coming up this Sunday. We'll find out who those top four playoff teams are going to be like, you know, as conference championship weekend will come down to an end this weekend as well. And looking back to rivalry weekend, we're mostly basing this top 25, basing it off of rivalry weekend. It pretty much started on Thursday night. Then continued on Friday, and then, of course, it continued on Saturday. So we had a pretty busy week of college football. There wasn't a lot of chaos, but there was a lot of close one-possession type games. And, you know, we did see a couple upsets. Otherwise, you know, we did see a couple upsets happen and everything. So we'll talk about those couple upsets that happened over the weekend here in this Top 25 video. So let's get right into my college football Top 25 rankings here for week number 14. I'm heading into conference championship weekend of the 2023 college football. Football season. We'll start from the bottom and work our way to the top, starting from 21 through 25. I got Kansas State at number 25 and then Oregon State at number 24. Uh, both of these teams uh, took some really tough losses this week, and you look at Kansas State starting with them. Tough loss to a pretty average Iowa State team. We had the first snow game of the year of college football in 2023, and it was a pretty good game between these two teams. I'm very surprised that both of these teams uh, scored a lot of points, and both you know both of these teams scored a lot of points in this game, uh, even though there was snow coming down in these conditions and everything. But Kansas State, uh, they had a late turnover there with like two minutes to go in the ball game. Um, I think they had like maybe like two timeouts remaining or maybe they didn't have any timeouts, but they did throw an interception there at the end of the game. And, you know, that was kind of, you know, enough for Iowa State to seal the game from there. So Kana State here at number 25, they finished with a record of eight and four in the regular season. But I'm not going to penalize this team after losing to a pretty average Iowa State team, um, you know, because if you look at it, the score was only like 42 to 35. It was a one possession loss for Kansas State. So they're here at number 25 for me. And then Oregon State at number 24 uh, took a beating against a really good Oregon team. I was kind of expecting a pretty close game between these two teams, but that was not the case whatsoever. I think just because Oregon has been playing some really solid football in the last few weeks, it just seems like Oregon State was not ready for this game either. And, you know, Oregon definitely was ready for Oregon State. They were out for revenge in this game. You know, Oregon State's offense just could not get it going in this game, and the defense just could not really handle the Oregon offense. So Oregon State... You know, I think they were in the top 15 for me last week, but then I dropped them a pretty good bit there after the absolute beatdown to a pretty good Oregon team and everything. So Oregon State, I'm not going to penalize them, though, out of the top 25 because this is a good team. I believe they have, like, really good quality wins on their schedule. And plus, their four losses have been to some really good teams this year in the Pac-12. So they're here at number 24. Clemson at number 23, drop, you know, jumps a couple spots for me here. Uh, Clemson obviously jumps a couple spots because both of these teams, Oregon State and Kansas State, uh, both lost this weekend. So Clemson here at number 23, a pretty tough game on the road at South Carolina, but they were still able to win that game. Offensively, wasn't really good enough, but defensively, that's what, you know, what, you know, that's what won Clemson the game in this one against South Carolina. And Clemson jumps a couple spots because of that, so they're here at number 23. Clemson might be the best 8-4 team in the country right now. Um, you know, you see three eight and four teams here at the bottom of my top 25, and Clemson is definitely ahead of Oregon State and Kansas State just because they have better quality wins than Oregon State and Kansas State does. So, Clemson here at number 23, again a very close call against South Carolina, but they get revenge on their rival and everything. So Clemson here at number 23, they finished the regular season at eight and four, and this team had you know has gotten better. You know they definitely have gotten better ever since that loss, I believe to like Florida State or maybe it was after that game. You know probably against you know like some other ACC team, but they're here at number 23. They had a pretty tough schedule this year. It wasn't like a really good season for Clemson, but they at least finished pretty strong. SMU here at number 22 and then Liberty at number 21. Two group of five teams here ahead of like power five teams. SMU will be playing for a conference championship this weekend against Tulane. That's going to be a very tough game there to call. 
Um, you know, that's a really tough prediction to make if I was going to make a prediction on that game. I would kind of favor Tulane as of right now, but, you know, SMU, don't really sleep on them. They have a really good chance to knock off Tulane in that game coming up this weekend in the conference championship game in the American Conference. But SMU finishes with a record of 10-2, and and then Liberty here at number 21, still the only undefeated group of five team left in the country, and also out of the group of five teams and all the college football teams as well. Uh, Liberty will also be playing for a conference championship game this weekend. They'll play against New Mexico State. I am favoring Liberty, you know, by at least by six or seven points in that game. Uh, Liberty finishes out their regular season at 12 and 0. This has definitely not been a surprise team for me, but they definitely have shown why they're a really good group of five teams. So they're here from, or actually at number 21 for me. Uh, they took care of business this weekend, so they're here at number 21. And these are my rankings here from 21 through 25. Let's now go into 16 through 20. So 16 through 20, I got NC State at number 20, a 19-point win over their rival North Carolina this weekend. Uh, I think they actually really took care of business in that game. I think I thought defensively they played pretty strong in that game. So NC State at number 20, this is another team that's kind of similar to Clemson. They're kind of like on a hot streak right now. This might be the best 9-3 team in the ACC right now. So NC State at number 20, they finished their regular season at 9-3, and, and they'll get ready for postseason play. We'll see where the committee puts them on selection Sunday. And then Iowa here at number 19, they're sitting there at 10-2. and uh, They will be playing for a conference championship game as well this weekend against Michigan. So they're sitting there at 10-2. and Again, offensively, they have not been very good this year, but defensively, that's been their strength. You know, that's been the strength about this Iowa team. But again, if the offense just really got things going, uh, you know, Iowa definitely would probably be sitting there in the top 15 perhaps for me. But again, if they don't have like a really good offense, they still have a really good defense. You look at their game against Nebraska this past Friday, a really close game there. It was only a three-point win for Iowa, but they were still able to come away with the win. Uh, that wouldn't really be a bad loss for Iowa because they still would have made it to the Big Ten Championship either way. So Iowa is now heading to the Big Ten Championship this week. And again, I'll be giving you a game preview slash game prediction on that you know conference championship game coming up this week. So stay tuned for that game preview slash game prediction video. So again, Iowa here at number 19. Again, they're sitting there at 10 and 2. They finish out the regular season at 10 and 2. Notre Dame at number 18. They're kind of sitting there in the middle of the pack for me. Uh, they took care of business against Stanford on the road uh, this past Saturday and everything. So Notre Dame with a very solid win for them and also a very solid season for them. I feel like this was a really good season for, you know, second-year head coach Marcus Freeman. Obviously, they helped the Sam Hartman really help them out. But they do have some really good losses on their resume. They do have, like, losses, you know, to Ohio State, Clemson, and they also have a loss to Louisville. So, those three losses were pretty good losses for Notre Dame, so that's the reason why they're kind of hanging out here in the middle of the pack. But Notre Dame, I think they have a really good chance to probably end out the year with 10 wins. It just depends on if Sam Hartman does play in the bowl game and everything, so we'll find out his decision on that game. And then Oklahoma State here at number 17, another team that is playing for a conference championship game this weekend. They'll play against Texas, of course. Oklahoma State had to win against BYU to get into the Big 12 championship, and that's exactly what they did. So Oklahoma State here at number 17, they're sitting there at 9-3. and three. We'll give you a game preview slash game prediction on that game as well. And then Tulane here at number 16, they're kind of similar to Notre Dame, kind of, you know, hanging in there in the middle of the pack. You know, Tulane doesn't have like a good resume, but they have that one loss to Ole Miss, and I'm still giving them some credit for that loss. You know, obviously that was a very tough loss for them. Even without their starting quarterback, they were very competitive in that game. So Tulane here at number 16, they finish out the regular season at 11-1, and and again, they'll play SMU for the conference championship in the American uh, this upcoming weekend. So Tulane, if they win that game, they're in a New Year's Six Bowl. If they don't win that game, I don't know what's going to happen from there. Maybe a group of five team doesn't make it into a New Year's Six Bowl, but we'll have to find out there as we get into conference championship game this weekend. So Tulane there, again, they're kind of similar to Notre Dame, just hanging out here in the middle of the pack for me. So they're here at number 16. And these are my rankings here from 16 through 20. All right, 11 through 15, I got Arizona at number 15. They absolutely embarrassed Arizona State this weekend. I believe Arizona put like over 500 total yards of offense in this game, if I'm not mistaken. But Arizona just overall pretty dominant against their rival Arizona State. They're here at number 15. This team is on a red-hot streak. 
They're sitting there at 9-3. This could probably be the best 9-3 team, maybe besides LSU, which I'll talk about in just a second. They might be the best 9-3 team in the country, but this team is also the best 9-3 team in the Pac-12 Conference. No question about it, you know, out of all the Power 5 teams and everything. So Arizona here at number 15, you know, they jump into the top 15 for me just because of that dominant win. So Arizona here at number 15. And then Louisville at number 14, uh, they dropped for me after that loss to Kentucky. A tough loss for this Louisville team, of course, you know, before heading to the ACC championship and everything this weekend. I think Louisville overlooked Kentucky just a little bit. I think that was the case for almost all these teams in the, you know, in the this weekend over the course of rivalry weekend. I think a lot of these teams definitely overlooked their rival, of course. You know, Louisville was one of them. We'll talk about more teams in just a second. But for Louisville, obviously Kentucky got a game-winning touchdown, or maybe I should say a late one-minute touchdown uh, to seal the deal. And, you know, the defense made a pretty big stop there at the end of the game. So Louisville here, a tough loss for them here at number 14. I still think this is one of the most surprises teams in the country. I think, you know, finishing 10-2 and in your first year under Jeff Brom is a really big accomplishment. But again, they'll play for a conference championship game this weekend. That's also a huge accomplishment there, and it also will be a huge accomplishment if they can knock off like a top five team in Florida State. So Louisville here at number 14, they drop because of that loss to Kentucky. Missouri at number 13. Absolutely embarrassed Arkansas this past weekend. The offense looked really good. The defense looked really strong. They pressure KJ Jefferson on the defensive side of the football. And Missouri, the way they've been playing this year has just been really unbelievable. This has also been definitely a really, really big surprise team kind of compared to Louisville, except Missouri has had Eli Drinkwitz there as the head coach for a while now, and he has definitely changed this program pretty good. So Missouri here, here at number 13 and then LSU at number 12. Kind of a tough scare for LSU in the first half against, you know, Texas A&M. A lot of people thought LSU was going to lose to Texas A&M. I thought about the same thing, but LSU ended up pulling away in the fourth quarter. And the reason why LSU is ahead of a 10-2 Missouri team is because of the head-to-head -head matchup. And again, head-to-head -head matters here for me. So LSU remains ahead of Missouri here at number 12. And then at number 13 is Missouri. And then Ole Miss here at number 11. It started, you know, with them on that Thursday night game against Mississippi State. The offense did not look really good for Ole Miss, but I thought the defense played pretty well for them. Um, Ole Miss also remains ahead of a 9-3 LSU team just because of the head-to-head -head matchup because Ole Miss defeated LSU in the regular season. So LSU and Ole Miss here, you know, like I said, head-to-head -head matters here. And again, LSU is ahead of Missouri. That's the reason why as well. So Ole Miss here at number 11 finishes 10-2 in the regular season. It looks like Ole Miss could possibly make it to a New Year's Six Bowl, but we'll find out where they're going to put them in the selection Sunday. So these are my rankings here from 11 through 15. All right, 6 through 10. I got Penn State at number 10. They finished with an overall record of 10-2. and two. Uh, They took care of business against Michigan State this weekend. Not much to talk about that game except the defense played pretty well, and the offense was very explosive in that game. So Penn State here at number 10. Michigan State's not been a really good team this year, so that's the reason why I think Penn State took care of business in that game. And then Oklahoma here at number 9. Uh, pretty good classic shootout here between Oklahoma and TCU in the final game of the regular season. It looked like Oklahoma was going to lose this game, but, you know, defensively they weren't really solid. But, you know, offensively uh, they kind of held their ground, and that's the reason why, you know, you can kind of trust Oklahoma in these shootouts. But Oklahoma, you know, they do miss out on the Big 12 championship. You know, I was kind of hoping – uh, for an Oklahoma and Texas rematch in the Big 12 championship, to be honest, uh, just to end out their big tw last year in the Big 12s really well. But, you know, Oklahoma, they finish here, you know, just in third place behind Oklahoma State just because of that head to head matchup. So Oklahoma finishes at 10 and 2 here in the 2023 season. Um, I don't think they're going to make it to a New Year's Six Bowl. We don't really know that's the case or not, but we'll find out here on Selection Sunday. And then Oklahoma, like I said, Oklahoma here at number nine. And then Alabama here at number eight, another classic Iron Bowl game here between Alabama and Auburn this past weekend. Um, Alabama needed a late touchdown there to secure the win. And it kind of goes back to a couple years ago. This is exactly what happened a couple years ago. You look at Auburn, they had the lead going into overtime. You know, they just needed to make uh, like one more stop on Alabama. And then Alabama obviously gets the game-winning touchdown there a couple years ago. And then a couple years later, Alabama gets a game-winning touchdown again. 
Uh, you know, Alabama definitely overlooked Auburn, to be honest. And like I said, I think that was a case for a lot of these teams here that you're seeing in the top 25. Alabama and Louisville overlooked their opponents this weekend. You know, Alabama was kind of focused ahead of the SEC championship game. And then for Louisville, they were kind of focused on the game against Florida State in the ACC title game. So... I believe both Alabama and Fort, you know, Alabama and you know Louisville were very similar this weekend. Except Alabama got the win over the over, of course, their rival Auburn, and then of course Louisville lost to Kentucky. But again, Alabama looking at their performance. I mean, I I know it wasn't really pretty for them, but you know they remain here at number eight for me. Uh, they're sitting there at 11 and one, and again they're playing for the conference championship game coming up this weekend against Georgia. And like I said, I'm going to make a um, prediction on that game coming up for you throughout this week. So Alabama at number eight, and then Texas here at number seven took care of business this weekend against Texas Tech. I feel like Texas finally played their best game, you know, here in the month of November. You know, obviously those three straight weeks, they were kind of, you know, falling apart against Kansas State, you know, TCU, and then, of course, you know, the other game was Iowa State. But Texas here sitting at 11-1. They'll play for a Big 12 championship game coming up this week. I will give you a game preview slash game prediction on that game against Oklahoma State and Texas. So, again, Texas here at number seven. They also stay ahead of Alabama just because of the head-to-head -head matchup in week number two. Hard to believe that was in week number two, and we're already on week number 14 of the 2023 college football season. But again, Texas still has that win over Alabama in the regular seasons. So that's the reason why they remain ahead of the you know Crimson Tide here in this top 25. And then Ohio State here at number six, tough loss to Michigan, of course, by six points. You know, turnover kind of changed the game from there. You know, Kyle McCord, of course, threw an interception. You know, Ohio State had a chance to win the game on a last second drive and everything, but then Ohio State, of course, turned the ball over. And I don't know why Ohio State was throwing it deep here on this Michigan defense. I don't know why they would decide to go deep there on like a chance, you know, you still got plenty of time remaining on the clock. Maybe it's because they didn't have any timeouts remaining, but, um, Again, Ohio State, a very tough loss for them. They have now lost three consecutive years in a row, and this is the third consecutive year in a row now that they do miss out on the Big 12, or actually the Big 10 championship. So Ohio State finishes the regular season at 11 and 1. Uh, we'll find out where they're going to be at, you know, in a New Year's Six Bowl, perhaps. I don't think they're going to make it to the college football playoff uh, just based off of that loss to Michigan. I think Michigan will be that number two seed. So, the, so, the, so these are my rankings here from 6 through 10. Let's now go to the top five and there's going to be a change here into the top five. I got Oregon at number five, so I got Oregon in the top five this week. This team has been playing some really solid football the last few weeks. You look at Oregon, they'll play for a Pac-12 championship this week, and I'm kind of leaning towards Oregon to win that game, and I've been saying that for the last few weeks. The way that Oregon has played ever since they lost to Washington, they definitely have looked better than Washington, and they definitely have been like the most dominant team in the Pac-12, maybe besides Arizona in the Pac-12, but Oregon has been that most dominant team in the Pac-12 in the last few weeks. So I'm kind of leaning towards Oregon as of right now, but again, that game prediction is going to come out, you know, this week, so stay tuned for that video. But Oregon sitting there at 11-1 took care of business against Oregon State, and they definitely did not overlook their rival this week, but a team that overlooked their rival was Washington. You know, Washington finishes here at 12-0. They finish undefeated. But I wasn't very impressed with their performance against Washington State. I knew that game was going to be kind of a scare for Washington. But they ended up pulling, you know, out the win here by a game-winning field goal. And like I said... There were just so many one-possession games over the weekend here in Rival Weekend. And again, that's the reason why Rival Weekend can turn into a lot of chaos. But it only turned out to be a couple upsets. But again, we just saw a lot of one-possession type games. But again... It will be Washington and Oregon here in the Pac-12 Championship this week on Friday. Looking forward to this matchup, the rematch from the regular season. And again, it's just going to be a lot of chaos here as we head into Conference Championship week. And then Florida State here at number three. Uh, they finish undefeated in the regular season at 12-0. Had a pretty tight scare there in the first half against Florida. Obviously, no Jordan Travis in this game, so I think that's the reason why they were kind of sluggish in this game. But I thought defensively they played pretty well in the second half. They forced some turnovers. And that was the reason why Florida State, I think, came out on top with this victory. Again, the offense wasn't 
wasn't great for them, but the defense played pretty solid for them. But again, um, you look at Florida State coming up this week, and obviously will play Louisville against you know against Louisville in the in the ACC championship. And that game preview slash game prediction came out you know just a few hours ago, so you can see who I predicted there to win that game. So go back and watch that video if you have not seen it yet. So Florida State here at number three, they finished undefeated in the regular season at 12 and 0, and then Michigan here at number two, they got the win over Ohio State. Obviously, I was very impressed with Michigan's. Um, you know, running game in this one, and then defensively, I was very impressed with their defense as well. Even though they gave up like 24 points in this one, but they were able to fight off and force the turnover at the end of the game and everything. And like I said in my game preview slash game prediction last week, uh, that's what's going to change the game. You know, I think Michigan, like I said, I trusted their running game a little bit more than Ohio State, and I also trusted Michigan's defense a little bit more, so that was the reason why I think Michigan won that game. Uh, the reason why is because of the running game. You know, Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards both ran the football pretty well in this game. So Michigan here at number two, uh, they finish out the regular season at 12-0. They'll obviously play against Iowa in the conference championship game coming up this weekend. So Michigan in here at number two. And then Georgia here at number one still for me. I know Georgia was sluggish against Georgia Tech, but let me tell you something. You know, Georgia and Alabama were both pretty similar this weekend. They definitely overlooked their rivals this weekend. You know, Georgia definitely overlooked Georgia Tech. Because if you look at Georgia's win against Georgia Tech, it was only a 31 to 23 win. Uh, that that just really surprises me there. I think it's because Georgia was not playing a big game. And you know, every time when Georgia plays in like these big games, they're always really good. But when they play in like these lesser games, they're not really good against lesser opponents. And that was the reason why I think Georgia had a pretty sluggish, you know, game here against Georgia Tech. And again, I think they were overlooking Alabama, just to, you know, overlooking Georgia Tech, and the same thing for Alabama against Auburn. And I think Georgia and you know Alabama were just focused on each other a little bit weak earlier. So again, I think that was a case for a lot of these teams. I think Florida State was overlooking uh, Florida this weekend as well. I think Washington was overlooking Washington State. Um, you know, Michigan and Ohio State, it's not really, you know, an overlook there between those two teams uh, because it's a rival game and everything. So both of those teams are pretty focused going into that game. They were both undefeated as well. But um, Oregon did not look over, you know, Oregon State. You know, they were definitely focused in their game. And then you look at, um, you know, Louisville, they definitely overlooked Kentucky as well. So there were a lot of these, like, top 15 or maybe, like, top 10 playoff teams that definitely overlooked their rivals this weekend. So, again, that was the case in rival weekend and everything and also a lot of one-possession type games that came down to pretty close finishes and everything. But, again, the top five here, I got Oregon at number five, Washington at number four, Florida State at number three, Michigan at number two, and then Georgia here at number one. And we'll find out which teams will win their conference championship games coming up this weekend. And like I said, you'll see those game previews slash game predictions, um, you know, throughout this week. I've already given you one. I gave you the ACC championship game earlier, and I did predict Florida State to win that game by three. So, again, go back and watch that video if you have not seen it yet. And I also pretty much, you know, um, predicted of how the game I think is going to go down as well. So these are my top 25 rankings here heading into week 14, also known as conference championship weekend of the 2020 college football season. Uh, give me your thoughts down in the comments below about my top 25 and also give me your top 25 down in the comments below as well. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned here for more sports content videos on my Lucas Ross sports channel.